Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Misty from Adamson Equestrian and today we're gonna to be talking about equine dentistry. So you're gonna to get to see Dr. Scott come out and work on our horse's teeth. This is something that we try to have done annually because it's super important to have a happy horse and if they have ulcers in their mouth, probably not gonna have very good rides. So if you enjoy this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more educational videos like this. Uh, Tino is going to be having some chiropractic work done later on this month, so something I'm super excited to watch because I've never seen it before. And I'm assuming some people out there have never seen it either, so uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more, and I hope you enjoy! Okay, so this is Dr. Scott. He's our vet that comes out once a year to float our horse's teeth for us. He's a great vet. He's super patient and very educational, and I always learn something from him every single time he comes out. But he's already given Tino a sedative here, which I did not video because Tino is very weird about having a vet out. Um, if he knows that he's going to get a shot, he gets a little crazy. So in order to keep him safe, I did not video because I was holding on to him and uh, trying to keep him calm while Dr. Scott was giving him the sedative. So he's a little loopy here and uh, what Dr. Scott is doing is just basically rinsing his mouth out. So getting all the extra hay and uh, food and anything that might be stuck in his teeth before he actually starts the procedure. <laughs> the little halter here that they're using is a pulley halter so that Dr. Scott can raise or lower Tino's head depending on where he needs to look in his mouth. I feel a lot less anxiety now that <laughs> now that the yeah poor buddy. I hope he stays this way. The little piece of equipment that Dr. Scott is putting in Tino's mouth here is called a speculum. Basically what it is is a device that allows him to have a place to rest his front teeth and it keeps his mouth open. So Dr. Scott can basically look around his mouth or feel around his mouth without having to worry about getting bit or uh, Tino chomping down on him. It's kind of the same thing if you go to the dentist, they put that block in your mouth so that your mouth stays open. You don't really have to try to hold it and it makes your mouth really tired. It's kind of the same idea, but for a horse. He did uh, <clears throat> flip over backwards a couple weeks, a couple weeks ago, and bit his tongue. So just so you're, I don't know if you'll still see the remnants of that loveliness. When horses eat, they move their teeth up and down as well as side to side so that they completely grind down whatever food it is that they're eating. And if their molars don't meet perfectly, with all this continual grinding, they'll start to develop these sharp points on the outsides of their teeth and as well as the inside. Once these sharp points start to form, it can cause ulcers in their mouth or sores in their mouth so that when you're riding, they're less likely to want to pay attention to what you're asking them to do because their mouth hurts. So what Dr. Scott is doing here is just sticking his fingers in there to feel along Tino's mouth on the top and the bottom, just to see where the sharp points are and where he's going to have to work. Mm -hmm. 
this might sound silly, but if you've been to the dentist multiple times a year, um, I go every six months to get my teeth cleaned and checked. But with the exception of the pulley and um, the actual float, which is the part that grinds uh, the horse's teeth, a lot of these tools that Dr. Scott is using is the exact same type of tools that your dentist would actually use, just on a bigger scale. So like the mirror to be able to look around inside of his mouth easier, the little tool that kind of pokes at his teeth to see if there's any decay, that kind of stuff. You can tell that Tino is a little bit nervous here just because he's super mouthy with the speculum. And he calms down a little bit more later, which if your horse is like this, your vet can always give him a little bit more sedation, but Dr. Scott opted not to, and he did just fine. He just has some rough cheek teeth edges in there, a couple okay. arcade, uh, upper left and right, and the buccal side or towards the cheek side has some really sharp edges. Okay. And on the lingual side of his lower uh, inside edges, basically against his tongue. He has okay. some rough uh, points, and uh, the good news is he doesn't have any real big uh, buccal uh, ulcers or anything of that nature, which is also very good. Okay. Um, I can tell where he did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, so our goal in there is to uh, remove those outside edges of the upper, inside edges of the lower, and uh, the leading uh, first premolar is going to have exposed to us, it's actually the second, um, um, that's right where the bit goes, and that's where we're going to do what's called a bit seat. It's very subtle, it's the very rostral leading edge of that first uh, premolar exposure that we have on the upper and the lower, and okay. we're going to arc that tooth up on the top and arc the tooth down on the lower, and then that's where the bit lies in the bar of the mouth. So when you pull back on the range and that bit comes back, it's hitting a nice smooth uh, transition to that uh, dental arcade versus an abrupt uh, point that will yeah. cause some sensitivity. So we're going to take our time with him because okay. he's a little bit sensitive here because he's a little bit mouthy. Um, yeah. If I need to give a little additional sedation in the wheel, then we're going to just start by utilizing the um, several pieces of equipment to accomplish our goals and uh, that we are using um, power rate equipment and uh, an assortment of hand uh, instruments to accomplish our job today. Um, we also um, want to make sure that we're doing our service for the horse and making sure that we're um, mindful as to what we're taking off and the importance of what to take off versus um, you know trying to make each horse look textbook in, in, inside the mouth. And uh, equine dentistry uh, and veterinary medicine has come a long, a long ways as far as the research that's been done and our knowledge as professionals, uh, the performance service, and it's most important to know what not to take off and what to take off, right? Makes and, sense. Uh, we want to be uh, very cognizant of each horse. Each horse is going to be different. And uh, so we're going to make this horse comfortable by removing those rough edges. And if there is a horse or a time where there's a, an incongruency, whether it's a step or a hook or a ramp, has additional uh, need for reduction, then we do so. We make a plan to do that. Um, uh, fortunately, for your horse, um, we have good alignment. We just have that's those good. rough points in there, and, and that's going to allow us to perform the service and we're just going to take our time and, and do that. We're going to see a plethora of tools being used, and uh, mind you that the equipment that you see here, um, we're going to be utilizing, and it's, 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 it's how it's being used in an appropriate fashion and not. Um, being abused, and right. so that's that's uh, how we are able to perform our service today, and so we're going to go ahead and get started. If you've never seen this procedure done before, watching it, it kind of looks like it would be a painful procedure for your horse to go through but it's not, it's completely painless for the horse. And especially with the sedative on board, that just kind of helps them to not be quite so anxious.
I haven't owned horses for very long in my life, but it doesn't really take very much to know that they communicate through their body language. So as nice as it would be to just be able to sit down and have a conversation with them, you know, ask them how they're feeling and what's bothering them. That's obviously not the case because we don't live in a Disney movie. So um, in order to tell when something's wrong, you really need to know how your horse acts when everything's kosher. So knowing what your horse's baseline is, how they eat, their attitude under saddle or when you're working on the ground is super important. And it's really the first step to being able to help them when you see or feel that something's off. If for some reason they're putting their hay in their water to soak it, or they're dropping food, they're dropping their weight, uh, they're drooling, that kind of stuff. Those are obvious signs that something's wrong with their mouth. So give them the benefit of the doubt and check to see if something's wrong physically before you just pass it off as if your horse is acting out from bad behavior. Think of how much it hurts when you have a sore in your mouth. It's pretty awful. And if you're like me, you constantly accidentally bite it several times so it makes it 20 times worse. So think of this in your horse's point of view. You have a sore spot or two in your mouth. You have a sharp tooth that's still constantly poking it. Add a cold hard bit on top of it with a rider constantly moving their hands to communicate with you and you're probably not going to have that great of an attitude and you're going to want whoever's on your back to get off in a hurry. So think of it like this uh, when your horse is acting up. There's usually a reason behind it. Tino's just getting his mouth rinsed out to get rid of any of the sharp bits that Dr. Scott has filed off with the big drill. And then he's going to switch to a smaller drill just to fine tune what he's been working on. Here he's just going to do a quick check to see if he's missed anything and then he's going to switch to his hand float to finish up. The hand tool that you see him using here is the one that you see most vets use to uh, do the entire procedure. 
Dr. Scott is educated as far as using the different types of drill bits and he's very meticulous about the way that he works so uh, I never feel like Tino's ever not in good hands and you'll kind of see him here he, he's constantly checking to see if he's missing any sharp points and he uses the hand tool I think just to fine tune uh, and do like an overall uh, quick sweep. When the procedure is done, your horse will still be super relaxed from the sedation and after a while they'll start to sweat a little bit, which is completely normal. You want to make sure to remove any hay or food from their stall. You don't want them to try to eat while they're super relaxed like this because they might not chew as thoroughly and then you have a choking hazard on your hands. And then also if your horse's stall door is like Tino's to where there's not bars across the top, you want to make sure that they don't stick their head out over their stall door and rest their neck on the door because that can cause them to accidentally asphyxiate themselves. So once the sedation starts to wear off, they carry on as they normally do and then you can give them some hay or food to eat. You just want to watch out for your horse while they're in this super relaxed state. I'd like to thank Dr. Scott and Ellen for being such good sports about letting me video this procedure. I know it's not easy doing something with a camera in your face, <laughs> but I appreciate being able to share this educational opportunity, so thank you both so much. Okay, so he floated up really nicely. Um, removed those rough cheek teeth edges uh, that we indicate uh, identified earlier. And uh, again, he did really well for that. And, uh, this is our first interaction with this horse today, and, and uh, we want to make it a, a good experience for him. Um, and uh, he did just well. Um, the nice thing about being able to use um, sedation and uh, with our dentistry is that we can also um, have the opportunity to put a nice uh, oral speculum in the mouth, uh, give us good access inside the horse's mouth so we can, we can visualize and can actually palpate uh, every single uh, tooth in the horse's head and um, you can't um, recognize the, the ailment or the, the challenge when it's hard to, to bring correction to it. So, right. so we take pride in uh, being able to, to be able to see exactly what we're doing and uh, ultimately causing less uh, soft tissue disruption by having good visualization and by having a little bit of sedation on board to allow that to occur. Um, it gives us the opportunity to perform those services uh, with greater uh, precision. So, so he'll be sleeping for about another hour. Uh, so we'll mm -hmm. be hay that might be in the stall to minimize the opportunity for him to want to uh, eat before he's awake. And I doubt that there's any. He's okay. he, he likes to eat. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Poor bud. I could not help but add in this little clip of my niece's horse, Noble, being a total creeper on Ellen. <laughs> He's such a weirdo, but that's why we love him. He's like, he's kind of got stalker status going on right now. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.